The 48 hour readathon literally just stopped and I'm picking up to record because it's time for another weekly reading vlog. In this week I'm reading for team time and I have a bunch of white covered books on the docket. I'm really, really, really hoping that I will find a five star this week because I have yet to find a five star this month and I need a five star in my life. And just in case you have no idea what I'm talking about, I run a month long readathon every single year called a Realmathon. It is a competitive team based readathon. There are four teams going head to head. You read books that either get you positive points for your realm or you read books that get you negative points that take away points from another team. It's a whole lot of fun. It's too late now to join but I'm pretty sure there'll be one next year around this exact same time. Wink wink nudge nudge. I'm probably going to watch The Traders all day tomorrow and not read very much but I would still like to get a lot of reading done this week. I have never read The Cruel Prince so I think I might try to do that this week. And the new Matthew Ward has also been calling my name. But I also need to finish Blood of Dragons. And I've also never read A Darker Shade of Magic, so I kind of want to try this as well. Or I could go classic fantasy with the Dragon Bone Chair, or I could go with my tried and true Brian Stabley and continue on in this world. So I have a lot of options. I'm not in the biggest reading mode, so I doubt I'll get to all of them. But as a mood reader, I like to have a pile of possibilities in front of me at all times. I have something to tell you guys. I've lost the plot. This train has gone off the tracks. I started reading this last night. No, this is not a white cover. However, it's got an object on the cover, so it'll still get points for team time. Essentially, it's Wednesday, and I've done very, very little reading. <laughs> I am in burnout mode. And every time I looked at these white books, something inside of me went, I don't really want to read those. Which is really crappy because these are all books that are on top of my TBR. So like, why do I not want to read them? I don't know, but it's a thing. So I haven't been reading. I've been watching a lot of reality TV. I watched season two of The Traders US. I started season one of The Traders UK. I'm still a fan of the US. Sorry, I know that's a hot take. I watched Alone season three, started Alone season four. Like, reality TV just took over my life the last two days. So then I was like, well, if I'm not reading at all, I'm not helping the team. So why not pick up the book that's been calling to me, which was this one. So that's what I did. Because last week when I was in the Realm of Shadows, I read Blood and Steel. I gave it four stars. I binged it. When I thought I was in a reading slump, this really, really got me out of it. And I was like addicted to these characters. And I went from here, this was how much I had done, to where I am now, where this is how much I got done. I essentially flipped, flipped it. Like, I read over 300 pages last night. <laughs> what? Ooh, that feels good. That feels really good. In this world, there's a prophecy about a girl wielding a blade and bringing darkness to the land. This has been interpreted to mean bringing the big bad shadow race. And so women have not been allowed to wield a blade for about 20 years. Insert our main character, Althea, whose only dream is to ever become a war sword, which is a really, really high up respected warrior. She is testing the bounds of that prophecy in this story. This is the sequel. <laughs> I had such a fun time with Wilder and Althea in the first book and this continues in the second book. The second book is set up to still have like a reluctant allies to lovers, good banter, grumpy ex-sunshine, mentor-mentee style relationship. It definitely like encompasses all of those but none of those all at once. It's kind of just like a conjoined thing of tropes. Like I don't really know how to explain this to you if you haven't read it, what like the trope would be. But I love their dynamic together and I also really enjoy the plot in this. I think that it is interesting but really I just live for Wilder and Althea together. I think their hot and coldness is very very much fun to watch. I think it can annoy some people if you just want your couple to like be cold and then be hot and then that's it you probably won't like this like there's a lot of back and forth one of them's ready to take the next step and the other one's not and then it just switches back and forth a lot and it's working for me <laughs> but I get it if it doesn't work for you so I'm really excited that I'm diving into this I'm about 50 pages in so I'm not far at all but this has already caught my attention and I'm already looking forward to the next time I can read today I need to film a bunch of videos I really need to get some videos edited and up for my brain <laughs> to stop telling me I need to be doing things. So that's my plan. That's the game of attack to film my TBR and a few other videos today and then read some more. I haven't read anymore, but my little library office area is kind of in shambles. There's books everywhere. I'm filming again today. Because I'm not reading, I'm putting my 100% into content planning and content filming to get myself prepared for April since I'm gone all of April, which is a good thing. However, it's dirty in here and I need to fix that. Essentially this shelf has been like torn apart so I'm gonna start putting books back on. Really that's all I have to do. It won't take me long. Books just need to be put back in their spots. 
have an eggnog latte again. I've read like nothing. I think I'm sitting at about 25% of this book done. Ah. I just slipped and died. Oh my god. I'm making Nick take me to... <coughs> oh my god. Why are, why are men such loud beings? Why do you smell like marmalade? <laughs> what? Wait, don't move yet. I have read like nothing. This is going to be the weakest vlog to ever exist on my channel. I've only got to like 25%. But the truth is I just don't feel like reading and I still need to get a video out to you. So today I'm making Nick take me to the bookstore. The 25% I have gotten into this book though, I am liking, but not as much as the first book. I feel like we're just at the place that the first book was at again, instead of like developing new character interactions and character feelings it feels kind of like a repeat of book one but i'm still liking it for a wilder and althea together but yeah off to the bookstore do you want to say hi <laughs> never mind nothing are you gonna <laughs> say hi no okay nick does not no. say hi guys I bought some things. I got a few stickers for my bullet journal. I'm really, really excited about them. These are made by Radical Buttons. This one's like a light post with a bunch of signs to different roads and drives, and they're all little romance tropes. We have books for my therapy, which I thought was super cute, and then I fell in love on the third chapter because that is such a mood for me in the books I read. And then I picked up When the Moon Hatched. I do have to read this in the next two weeks for my dragon vlog, and I'm really excited. I was hoping it was gonna be a tall paperback, and it's not. However, it looks really well made. Oh, look at all like the drawings. You're not gonna be able to see this because I'm overexposed but that's really pretty. For those who feel small and quiet spread those wings and roar. That is so sweet. There's like a bunch of art in this. Even like this stunning. I'm really really excited to read this one. I think I'm going to really really like it. And then this was a book that I had not even heard of and it just kind of caught my attention when I was there. Between Life and Death by Jacqueline Cott. It says the gods are watching on this. It says for Akatar fans who are looking to scratch that insatiable itch, this one's for you. His eyes return to mine, that invisible tether between us strung too tight. That magnetic pull, it was unbreakable, unyielding, eternal, and it demanded that we collide. There's something about having magic as a death sentence. Our main character's brother is conscripted to war and she ends up joining the rebels to get him back. But there's something about the rebel leader and Sage knows better than to get involved with a guy like him but knowing and doing are two very different things. And that would sound intriguing. I'm looking for more fantasy romance to read so I figured why not. This one does, you can't see it still, this one does have a little tree in the chapter headings. I actually can't get over the art in this. It was really funny. We filmed a lot of b-roll content. We also filmed a reel while we were there. I don't go to bookstores very often with Nick, but Nick is very, very supportive of my content creating. And so he was filming me like crazy, filming b-roll like crazy, just filming stuff. And everyone was just chatting about him in the bookstore and it was really cute. Um, but we did get a lot of content for a reel. So I'm gonna go make that. It'll already be up by the time you're seeing this, but I'm gonna go edit that now so that I can get it up on the Instagram and the TikTok and probably the YouTube shorts. I'm really excited for these stickers. I love this little light post one. It's so cute. Oh, Charles, you're being furry monster. Why don't you say what you really wanted to say? 
because he's That doesn't stop you normally. The camera's out and you're like, ooh, I'm gonna be a nice oh person. God, I am big for nutsack. I already got a clip of him sleeping. I've made it about 65% into this. I have about two hours left. So I'm gonna go crawl into bed and read for the life of me so that I can finish this by tomorrow because tonight is the end of Ramathon. Like it hits midnight in like four hours. So I need to do some reading. I need to get this done. I'm just not loving it. Like truly, even without the reading slump problem, this is pretty much just the characters being angry at each other, picking a fight, sleeping together, saying they can't sleep together anymore, going somewhere else, being angry at each other, picking a fight, sleeping together, saying they can't sleep together, and just on and on and on and on. And there's just not a lot other than that happening. And I'm just, I'm kind of bored with it because I feel like the first book was also kind of very similar to this and I need something new. So yeah, I'm hoping that the plot picks up in this latter half because we're setting up a lot that has to do with slaying the shadow prince. I loved that book. So I'm hoping we see some of those characters. Also, tomorrow I'm gonna get sappy and I'm going to do a whole like, oh my god, end of Ramathon clip, but I'm tired tonight. <laughs> so tonight I'm just going to read until it ends. I did it last night. I did finish this. I finished it before midnight too, so I'm pretty proud of myself. I am gonna give it three stars. There were things I liked about this book, but most of it was just kind of boring to me. <laughs> As I said in the earlier clips, there was just a lot of back and forth between them and a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of smut scenes. Far too many for my liking. We can fade to black sometimes. It is okay. I like a little mix of both. Also, I think Slaying the Shadow Prince may have hurt my liking of this book a little bit. I think I knew too much. I think the one main thing that happens in this book I didn't really care about because I already kind of knew from that book. I kind of wish I had held out on reading Slaying the Shadow Prince for between book two and book three three because of that but also I gave slaying five stars I loved it it was incredible amazing and would I have liked this series as much without reading that first I also don't think so I think I may have given up after this book because I wasn't really the truest biggest fan of this I just don't think that this book did anything for our characters like our relationship in this is exactly like it was in this there's no relationship growth and at some point hot and cold back and forth stops being cute it stops being fun to read and it's just like wow this is toxic how long can we go doing this like I don't want to watch you just be back and forth with each other all the time I, I don't want to watch you have sex get back together break up fight have sex get back together break up for like 800 pages because it's been two books of essentially that I also feel like the plot left to me in this one like nothing I learned in book two was something I hadn't learned in book one where were our answers about like Thea's heritage we didn't learn Learn anything more about that we just cemented what we learned in book one and I don't know like I need more to happen in my books this really really felt like a middle book syndrome this felt like only about the character moments it felt only about the smut to me yeah I don't know I'm excited about where it ended I am excited to dive into book three but I'm also nervous that's really where I'm at I love Wilder Hawthorne though so like that's he's what makes a story for me like I live for his chapters but now I'm thinking maybe I should just go read Slaying the Shadow Prince because that one was impeccable. Anyways, that is the end. I need to get us some points with this book. Oh my god, I didn't even realize I had to do that. My brain has shut down. This book is 500 pages, so I think that gets us the 20 point mark. It is a book I paid for. It's a popcorn read. It has an even amount of letters in the title. It has been new to my TBR. I literally bought it last week. And I did read it in multiple formats. I read the ebook, the physical book, and the audiobook at one point. As well as it has the cover item, not the cover color. And it is a school setting. There is like a mentor-mentee in a training setting within this. 
those are my points for the Rama time. I really hit burnout this week. I'm excited to get over my reading slump over burnout in the next couple weeks. April is a chill month for me. However, I do need to say just like a really, really big thank you for everyone for participating in Realmathon. This has been incredible, amazing. I do still have a hint for you, so stay till the end. Um, but like this has been the best year for Realmathon so far. I know it just gets bigger and better every single year. I'm coming up with more fun concepts. I have so much fun creating this little, little baby. I have some ideas for next year. So definitely like if you're not subscribed, I run this readathon every single year. Every single year you can have fun in Realmathon and beat all the other teams or lose to them, I guess. Only one person can win. But yeah, I don't know. I, I just feel like your participation this year has been higher than it ever has been before. I loved seeing everyone excited about books, excited about reads in the Discord, like doing pull picks, hanging out in sprints all the time. You are an incredible, amazing community and I would be nothing without you. So thank you so, 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 so much because I couldn't do Ramathon without you. And that's amazing. Um, yeah, I'm done being sappy. I am co-hosting a readathon in May. The announcement will be soon. When it is up, I will link it down below, but you should go follow Books with Lexi. If you just want to watch more reading vlogs from me, I'll have one of my favorites on the screen right here. I really love how this one turned out. And for your little secret hint for the last run Realmathon vlog, the team currently in third place is the Realm of Shadows. Do with this knowledge what you will and you have until Tuesday to submit your books. Bye!